All right, sir, could you please introduce yourself? Yes, yeah, so I'm Lieutenant Colonel Chris Griffin, the CO, outgoing CO of 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines. And can you please spell your full name? Yes, it's Christian, C-H-R-I-S-T-E-O-N, Griffin, G-R-I-F-F-I-N. And what's your hometown, sir? Uh, I'm from Mims, Florida. And what's the newspaper from your hometown, sir? Uh, I believe it's called the Star Advocate. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been back there, though, so Star Advocate, I believe. All right, sir. So uh, you just turned over as the battalion commander for the 3rd Battalion, 5th yep. Marines. With that, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what your battalion accomplished while you were the commander? Sure. Uh, well, uh, we deployed with the 15th MU, uh, first to the 7th Fleet Area of Operations. We conducted a theater security cooperation exercise with uh, the Armed Forces of East Timor. Uh, so it was uh, somewhat of a humanitarian exercise, but also training with uh, their host nation forces. Uh, and then from there, we went over to 5th Fleet, the Central Command area of operations. We did uh, three consecutive theater security uh, operations as well. Uh, first with the Kuwaitis, uh, then with the United Arab Emirates, uh, and then with the uh, Saudi. So I'd say what we accomplished is we, we, um, we did a lot of training, uh, making ourselves more proficient, but also helping develop the proficiency of uh, some of those countries. But most importantly, probably is developing that relationship. Uh, you know, they, they, uh, they were able to see up close and personal the kind of Marines that we have and that our Marines were able to demonstrate a genuine interest in, uh, in their country and, and uh, how they do business there. So the, probably the most important thing is we, we strengthen, strengthen relationships that are critical to our country. All right, sir. So I'll ask you to reflect upon your, your years as commanding officer. What would you say of all those years and all those, uh, those exercises, what was the highlight of your career, sir, uh, here at 3-5? Uh, probably not, not necessarily a single point, but watching throughout my time, watching a young Marine, uh, say a PFC, uh, who's now become a corporal fire team leader on my way out, who's a guy who, uh, uh, and I can think of a few offhand, but uh, a guy who checks in, is a PFC, he's, he's a little bit, uh, you know, scared, timid, and the like, and uh, now here we are two years later departing the command. Uh, he, he's, you know, corporals, large in charge, very proficient, and training, training new, mar new marines. It's, it's great to see. I'd, I'd say that's the highlight. Earlier today, you talked about Third Battalion, Fifth Marines having a great legacy, sure, and how that motivates marines to yeah. move forward. Can you tell me how that motivated you as a commanding officer? Yeah, it's uh, it, if you think about the legacy of three five, you know, starting off in Bellow Wood. Uh, service in Guadalcanal, all the way through World War II to Okinawa, uh, from Pusan, Incheon, Chosen in Korea, uh, Quezon, Hue City in Vietnam. I mean, the, the unit has an extraordinary history of, uh, of distinguished service in combat. So that weighs on you to, to live up to that. You, you want to live up to the, uh, to the reputation that was built for you by the, those who have gone before. And uh, every day it's something that I think about is, Hey, how do I make sure that I'm living up to the reputation that uh, that I've inherited from guys who paid for it dearly? So, uh, it, it's a unit that has a tremendous legacy, and because of that legacy, Marines are, and myself included, uh, deathly afraid of of tarnishing that legacy. So, because of that, they work all the harder, and then the the results of their performance only enhances our legacy even further. So, what do you hope that your contribution will be to that legacy, sir? Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, the mentorship, I'd like to believe that I've, that I've mentored some captains and lieutenants in particular uh, who, who have, you know, understood the, uh, the importance of their own leadership, their own mentorship on junior Marines. So I think uh, I'd consider myself an approachable, patient, uh, mentoring leader. And, and I believe uh, that, I, you know, I've poured my heart and soul into mentoring some of my captains and the lieutenants in particular. Uh, and, I, and I hope that they've learned from that and will in turn do the same thing. Sir, you said part of your leadership style is that you want to surround yourself with good people. Absolutely. And uh, tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Well, in my case, uh, you know, I, I probably need to surround myself with good people just to, uh, just to make sure that the battalion is successful. But uh, the, uh, the bottom line is I've been surrounded by such a superb supporting cast, the, 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 uh, the company commanders, their senior enlisted, uh, my staff, uh, that it would have been pretty hard for me to fail. 
Um, certainly hard for the battalion to fail. On numerous occasions, uh, you know, I, I looked at some of the leaders that we have in this unit and I thought, you know, back when I was lieutenant or, or a company commander, uh, I wasn't nearly the officer that, uh, that this guy is uh, so when I was the equivalent rank. Uh, and between that and just some meat eater staff and COs enforcing my intent, their company commander's intent, uh, you know, you can at times feel like it would be hard for this train to come off the tracks. There's just so many people here who are so talented that are, uh, you know, all, all pushing to achieve my intent. It's a humbling and, uh, you know, comforting to know that I have that kind of uh, force behind me. Sir, uh, could you tell me a little bit about Lieutenant Colonel Rice? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, we, we have never served before uh, together. I, I checked into 1st Battalion, 4th Marines as he was on the way out of the unit. So I know him, but mostly I know him by reputation. Uh, we have a lot of mutual friends that are here today. Uh, and uniformly, they all tell me that he is a highly proficient, very driven, uh, you know, forceful, decisive leader. So uh, his, his reputation absolutely precedes him. He's held some very demanding billets. Uh, Mu Opso uh, at PPNO now, certain billets that uh, you, you wouldn't succeed if you weren't a capable, uh, a capable Marine. So I, I have every confidence that he is the right guy to, you know, continue to move the ball down the field for the dark horse. Is there anything you'd like to add, sir? No, I think that's it. It's uh, you know, it's been a it's been a tremendous honor. Uh, like I said out there, it's been the, the greatest professional honor of, of my life to have uh, to commanded this battalion. Uh, absolutely superb battalion. I was humbled uh, and inspired on, on a daily basis by watching our Marines in action. So uh, I, I hate to see my time in command come to a close, but uh, it, it's been, I, I'm a better man for the, for the opportunity and I'll always cherish it.